Okay, let's talk about vectors. Vectors can seem confusing, they can seem abstract, they can uh, just initially wonder what are they, and uh, hopefully this introductory video will help you a little bit get started, and then we'll start working with them, and the more you work with them, you'll see they're just something with direction. Uh, and so uh, remember that in, vec in physics, we use symbols or variables for mathematics, and they refer to some measured or calculated value, right? Um, any distance, any displacement, any time, any velocity, and so on, speed. Remember not to forget putting units on your numbers. Numbers don't mean anything without units. And even if I know it's a speed, it was at miles per hour, kilometers per hour, meters per second, what is it? Also, pay attention to significant figures and decimal places. Uh, to pay real close attention in doing research is pretty tedious, but at least have some awareness of that uh, in this course. So let's go over and talk about the difference between scalars and vectors. So you've been doing scalars a lot. Uh, scalars and vectors are two different types of quantities, and they're very general. So a scalar is anything that only has an amount, and it doesn't refer to any direction in space. So anything that you can measure or calculate that has nothing to do with a direction in space is a scalar. Think of scale or amount. Whereas a vector is anything that has both amount, with units, of course, always, and direction in space. So people say, oh, time, well, that moves forward, right? Well, not in space, you can't point. I mean, time doesn't move north, so it doesn't move up, right? So it's got to be a direction in space. And so anything that you want to talk about with direction has to be dealt with in the way that we deal with vectors. So that's just a class of stuff, anything that deals with direction. All right, so let's give lots of examples. You've already learned some kinematics concepts. There's lots of types of scalars that we represent as variables. You know, instant, t, better to subscript it, t earlier, t at state one, t at state two. That's, there's no direction to that. An interval in time, delta t from earlier to later. There's no direction there. Distance is d or d earlier to later. Speed is a, is a scalar. Energy is a scalar. Flux is a scalar, which you don't know what that is. And there's lots of scalars out there. And you just add them and subtract them and deal with them, divide them and multiply them and so on. OK, we'll come back to this. So there's also lots of types of vectors. So vectors, all these vectors, anything with direction, is handled mathematically in a similar way. We use triangles, we use angles, things like that to specify the direction. So for example, position. How far from the origin, wherever you choose zero to be, zero could be here, zero could be here, whatever, and which way? So there's a direction. Displacement, how far and what direction straight from the earlier position to the later position, independent of the path, just straight. But there's a direction, that way, that way, that you know. So that's a vector. I have to deal with it in this way that we're going to learn. Velocity, how fast and in what direction? Speed, just how fast. Velocity, how fast and what direction? So we have to know what we mean. Acceleration, force, momentum, electric field. There's lots of vectors, but we deal with them all the same way. And that's what we have to learn. Now, here's a subtle point that is quite deep, and as we go on, I'll come back to this, and you'll be ready to understand, for instance, the difference between energy and momentum. Okay, and this is a critical kind of a subtle thing. I know there's a part of that that, that bothered me as I was learning, and then realizing that, wait a minute, for scalars, zero. What does it mean to zero? I have zero, or there's zero. Um, well, sometimes it means none. They have zero money, none, right? But sometimes it's a reference amount. For instance, what's the zero height? Well, it could be the tabletop, because I'm not going to drop it off the table, hopefully. That's zero height. Um, then lower than that would be less than zero, and more would be higher than zero. But then you say, well, that's silly. Why not call the ground a zero height? Fine, but then you walk along and you see a big hole. Well, that's lower or less height 
than zero. So you create a reference, height is a very good one with energy too, and plus means more than wherever you said zero was, and minus means less than wherever you said zero is. So it doesn't have to mean none. For scalars, it has to do with the amount, more than zero or less than zero. Okay, we'll come back to that. So you can set any height to be zero, and then there's higher or lower. Higher or lower. Okay, cool. With vectors, plus and minus doesn't refer to more or less. Plus and minus refers to direction, not the amount. Okay, so that's, that's a very important di distinction that will come up later. Don't overprocess it. So keep it simple. Plus is, means that the vector is in the direction you chose as plus positive. To the right, to the left, up positive, down positive, it's up to you. Along the plane up, along the plane down, whatever you want, doesn't matter. It's just something, a tool for calculation. Then the other way is negative. So the plus and the minus only refer to a chosen direction and the opposite way. So a good example is a velocity of 10 meters per second, well that's 10 meters per second, about 20 miles an hour, in the positive direction, the direction you chose positive. Negative 20 meters per second, well you might say negative 20 is less than 10, isn't it? No, negative 20 meters per second, about 40 miles an hour, is faster than plus 10 meters per second. So negative 20 meters per second is more, it's faster, but it's in the negative direction. One's in the positive direction, the other's in the negative direction. And so plus minus with vectors, it's just a directional distinction. Whereas plus minus with scalars is relative to more or less than zero. Deep, let that go, but come on over here. And we'll talk about four ways to represent vectors. I'll give you specific examples in the next video when I get to that. So there's four ways that we write out something and say, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, you got to deal with direction here. You can't just add up these numbers. You're going to have to look at which way they're going. Okay? Four ways. Uh, first two, not too bad. The second two, really just triangles, trigonometry, and Pythagorean theorem. Takes a little while. Once you get it, you've got it, and you can talk about all kinds of things. So vector variables. Now you can type, in books, old books, and some books still, will type the letter as a bold letter. Now I don't know how you write it exactly, so that's pretty tough. So you can, that would say, hey, you, that's a velocity or force or whatever A is, um, and that includes direction. And we'll see how you have to be careful to, in analyzing it. You could also write this with an arrow, or often a half arrow, on top. So how would I write that? I'd say V, and you could write a full arrow, but a half arrow is kind of faster. So we just kind of go zip, zip. If you want, you can go like that. You can see it typed either way sometimes. Then I don't have to worry about the fact that I don't know how to draw bold. You know, F. And what's that saying is, is saying, hey, wait a minute, you can't analyze this unless you use vector techniques, which we're going to learn, which is to divide and conquer and to write triangles, okay, independent parts. So we just write vector variables, and we can move them around very nicely, easily, without even getting to the details. But we want to get the details, we might represent them graphically or pictorially as an arrow. So when we draw an arrow, Notice that the arrow doesn't have to mean something spatial. It could be a velocity, it could be a force, it could be a magnetic field, it could be lots of things. But we have a tail, the back end there, and a tip. Never forget the arrowhead or the arrow tip. Okay? Always draw, because I can draw that line, that line without an arrow. I don't know which way it's going, up and to the left or down to the right. So make sure you always draw those tips. So we'll do arrows. Usually we'll use rough sketches and where, you know, if it's a little longer, then that means a little more. If it's twice as long, twice as much, but just rough sketches, and then we'll use trigonometry to sort it out. Sometimes you might draw things on a scale diagram. It's a good exercise. We often don't do that. 
You can create a scale, for example, two, 10 miles an hour can be drawn as two centimeters. You can draw that on graph paper. You can represent that as 10 miles an hour uh, colon two centimeters. I'm going to represent this as that, or five miles an hour, whatever you want. Or any concept, any vector concept, 10 pounds could be represented as two centimeters, or whatever you want. So arrows, keep it simple, you'll see. Tail and tip, know those distinctions. Polar form, okay, this is where we start, how do we analyze it? Well, we've got to get into the details. Polar form just tells you the amount with units, and the direction. Now, if it's one dimension, which we've been doing, then the direction is given by plus or minus. You know, plus 10 meters per second, minus 20 meters per second, one way or the other way. But now we're going to go into 2D. And we could do 3D, it's just tedious, so when you're learning, there's no need to get lost in that. In the sketch, the amount is seen as the vector length. We'll be drawing triangles, so that'll be seen as the hypotenuse of a triangle when we break it down. You'll see later. Don't overthink it. We've got to jump in. The direction you can give by some convenient angle. Any angle will do, just as long as it means whatever it means. So it is what it is. Um, okay, cool. Uh, what I mean by that is, if I draw that direction, and I want to know how much is going up and how much is going to the right, I could use uh, this angle, or I could use the other angle. If this one's 20 degrees, that's 70 degrees. It doesn't matter which one I use, just as long as I'm clear, the meaning is the same. Okay, so that's fine. And then the last way to represent vectors and the way that we're going to work with vectors is to work in rectangular or component form. A component is a part. A stereo component as a part of your stereo system. Um, now this is an interesting little bit here. So we, there's two ways to do it. Either is sort of fine, but we'll see that the, the second way, it's just a notation, it means the same thing. On the one hand, you've got the amount that your vector is going in the x direction with units. You can't give an amount without units, otherwise we don't know what that number means. The amount in the x direction, what's the x direction? Whichever way you chose, right? The amount going there. Now, if it's in the opposite, opposite to the x, positive x direction, you'll put a negative amount. That'll say the negative x direction. The amount in the x direction with units, comma, amount in the y direction with units. Okay, I'm going to give you examples in the next one, but that's, you know, so that's, this is the total amount in the direction. This is part of it, or the component, the part of it going in the x direction, and the part or component going in the y direction. Now, that's kind of fine. You'll see stuff like this in linear algebra. But it's often better for us to work this way. Instead of putting a comma between the separate parts, or perpendicular parts, we're going to use this notation. We're going to take the amount in the x direction with units, times i hat plus the amount in the y direction with units times j hat. If you want 3D, you do the amount in the z direction times k hat. So we say this as i hat, and all that means, this is really critical, it means in the x direction. If this is negative, then it means opposite the x direction. And all J hat means is in the Y direction, whatever that is. It could be anything, right? That's all it means. It's just a bookkeeping device. It's saying you can't add these numbers up because they're perpendicular directions. You can't add, you gotta keep them separate. You can keep, keep, keep them separate columns, or you can mathematically keep them separate. Because you're gonna work with all the X's, and then you work with all the Y's separately. Then you can combine them to go back to polar form. You'll see that. So that's all it means. It's often called a unit vector. In fact, I think everyone calls it a unit vector. It should be called a direction vector. It doesn't even have a unit. It's not one anything. It's, it's got no magnitude whatsoever. It's just a direction. 
It's a direction device, a bookkeeping device. It's very important. I hat, J hat, K hat. Sometimes it's written as X hat. It doesn't matter. So you'll see some books will write X hat and Y hat. Whatever. You can call it Bill hat and Jill hat. I don't know. What, whatever you want. But it, all it's saying is these numbers cannot be added even though you can put a plus sign between them. It's saying this much in the x direction and this much in the y direction. And the total is what that vector is doing. Okay, we're going to see that this is one side of a right triangle and this is a perpendicular side of the right triangle. The total is the hypotenuse. So this part squared plus this part squared, square root, is the total amount. And we're going to break it down and just do everything into perpendicular parts. Divide and conquer. Now what we want to do next is to look at particular kinematic examples.